Telling someone you like metal music is a lot like telling someone exactly what genre of pornography you're into. <laughs> It's just like, whoa, hey, didn't want to know that about you. I would like to get out of your car. <laughs> you can't, man. I'm using you for the carpooling. You're stuck! So he's like, oh, it's so loud. They're yelling. You like this? This makes you happy? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it brings joy to my heart. That's, it does. It does. Oh, the yelling's usually the biggest thing. It's usually the biggest thing that upsets people. They're like, why, why would anyone ever want to be that? Bah? Why would... <laughs> I was like, well, thanks for saying you don't like my stand-up. That's nice. <laughs> You're a good friend. But, like, you can't imagine why anyone would want to yell? Like, at all? Like, you tell me you don't remember that kid in kindergarten who used to just run around screaming like a dinosaur all the time? He made a career out of it. He's just running around acting like a maniac. His like, teachers, the school counselors are like, Dylan, this behavior will never amount to anything. He's like, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> Witness me! That's his job! He gets to scream on stage, acting like a demon, because he is still mad at his stepdad. <laughs> and then strangers run in circles, hitting each other, looking like a bunch of pissed off Power Rangers. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Oh, I love a mosh pit. Big fan of a mosh pit. If you don't know what a mosh pit is, uh, it's a place you go to kick 15 year olds. <laughs> Consensually. These are consensual kickings. <laughs> I'm not just showing up at some middle school just be like, oh, think fast, you kids. You're the future, I'm the present, you need to learn. That's not. Uh, don't worry. If some of you are parents and you're like, ah, my child, don't worry. I used to be 15 years old as well. Full head of hair. <laughs> Hopping in a mosh pit. Some bald dude in his 30s with a beard would hit me. I'd be like, what's happening? He's like, I am your future! <laughs> We're running clockwise! Let's fucking go! <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I highly recommend it. I do love going to live rock and roll shows. Uh, sometimes, singers and bands like to tell jokes in between songs. I'm always like, ha 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 ha, stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> They're always very bad. This, oh. <laughs> this is my favorite thing. Like this is what I think about 24 seven. Just figuring out what words I need to yell at a group of strangers to hear you make joy. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound. <laughs> what? Okay, too honest. My bad. I showed you guys my heart, and you guys were like, ooh, put it back. <laughs> we're not eased into this all the way, bud. Uh, oh, just, it's upsetting, because whenever they tell jokes, it's always bad jokes, and the audiences always react very... They're always like, that's so funny! I'm like, mm, I want to high kick a lot of you, but the songs aren't playing right now. You just can't start kicking people when the drummer's not doing anything. It's rude. I was at a show six months ago, up in Washington, in between songs, Singer in the band goes, hey, you guys, what's the area code here tonight? Bunch of people start yelling out the answer, and he goes, no, no, not tonight. Tonight, the area code is 42069. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Because that is not an area code. That is a zip code. <laughs> yeah. The coolest zip code there is. Are you kidding me? 42069 just nom 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 nom. Oh, half of you are cool? Come on. The center was like, nah dog, we ain't about that life. 
42069 is the coolest in theory, not in practice. <laughs> Cottonmouth. <laughs> it's a mood killer. <laughs> You're like, mm, you might be pretty moist, but I'm pretty parched. I gotta go hydrate real quick. I had to look it up. <laughs> I was like, that's the zip code. Is it real? <laughs> and it's real. <laughs> it's real. And it is in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a waste! <laughs> that's, that is such a waste! Because that is a place where it is not legal. To 420 or to 69. It's... <laughs> They're both forbidden. You do a 42069, Mitch McConnell shows up. He just pops up just like Bruh. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> not allowed to get a little smoky and get a little snacky. It is It is forbidden. I'm going to take your health care and use it on my necks. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun having an albino turtle tell us what to do. <laughs> He's like, you need to be more fiscally responsible. <laughs> I want to smack him in the jowls and see how many circles I can do with the momentum. <laughs> oh, man, what was I talking about? Oh, my car. All right, yeah, I... <laughs> I recently got diagnosed with ADD or ADHD. I did not listen to the doctor. <laughs> Which does mean I earned it. <laughs> I, honestly, she was saying a bunch of words and I was like, I should pay attention, and I wasn't. And then she said, Ritalin. I was like, oh, okay, what was that? <laughs> Trying to get me to do drugs, madame? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Yeah, because up until that point, I've only ever done drugs recreationally, never professionally. <laughs> and it is a game changer. When you actually get the drugs your body is supposed to have, wow, that is interesting. <laughs> it made me realize pretty much all of you have just been walking around, thinking your thoughts all the way through this entire time. <laughs> like superheroes. <laughs> You're like, here's the first part of my thought, here's the second part of my thought, here's the end of my thought, I'm done with that thought. Fuck you. Like, that's... <laughs> Check your privilege, please and thank you, all right? <laughs> Every day of my life is not... That, it's just who, what, where, when, why? I don't... <laughs> I'm bored. We still need to finish that joke about your car. <sighs> <laughs> I was driving? Okay, there we go. We'll get back to it. <laughs> I was driving, far left lane, going over the speed limit. Uh, and I was momentarily in the blind spot of a lifted truck. You guys don't really have that many around here. We have a lot of them up in Washington. And that's fine, I used to own a truck. I understand why it's appealing. You get to hop in there, feel tall, it's nice. I love driving in a truck, you get up there, you're like, I'm a king, you guys were a bunch of peasants. <laughs> Feels good, but just a quick thought, if you do have a lifted truck, I'm not trying to shame you, but I do have an idea. You should be taller than your tires, that's a thought. <laughs> Because I understand what it feels like when you're up there, when you've ascended to your throne. But we see you climb up there, bud. We see you when you're just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, what is, what's that little gremlin doing? Looks kind of cute, man. I want to put him in my pocket. <laughs> so I'm driving past this li lifted truck momentarily in the blind spot. He decides in that moment to get in my lane. Someone is behind me, so I have to hit my horn, can't slam on my brakes, have to hit my horn, and it goes, <laughs> I was like, what the f that's the sound? That's the sound we make to deter collisions? Just, <laughs> I went thousands of dollars into debt. Thousands of dollars into debt for that sound to potentially be the last sound I make on this planet. Just, yeah, that could be my swan song. I'm just gonna shuffle off this mortal coil, sounding like Beaker getting choked out by someone with soft hands. Just, ah! <laughs> Whole time, music's still playing. The dude's just like, I'm like ah, ah, ah. What is, 
me and Dylan doing a weird duet together. It was, it's kind of fun. <laughs> oh man, <sighs> got a lot of traffic. You guys have a lot around here. It's ridiculous. I have a lot up in Washington. Every time I get stuck in traffic, it makes me miss March 2020. Yeah. <laughs> it was not a fun time for the world, but it was a fantastic time for the freeway. <laughs> Ooh, I'd just hop on an interstate and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> just no brake lights. <laughs> That's the horizon! <laughs> Oh no, I want everybody to die. <laughs> okay, good, re good reaction. Uh, <laughs> people react weirdly to the amen, all right. <laughs> See, that's what I worry. I, I did a show a couple months ago in Idaho, Idaho, and I did that joke, and a guy yelled out, Hell yeah, I said that last week. I was like... <laughs> That's a little bit worse than amen. Uh, also, the dude kind of looked like me, which makes me uncomfortable. He's a bald white dude with a beard and tattoos. You're like, oh no. <laughs> what does he identify as? <laughs> uh, patriot or domestic terrorist, which is it, bud? This is the sketchy look. I, I know, I've looked like this for a while. Honestly, I've been walking, I've seen a bald white dude with a beard and tattoos in my peripheral and just been like, that guy seems sketchy. And then I'm like, mm, that is my reflection. <laughs> Ooh, we should talk about that in therapy. <laughs> oh man. Uh, he was actually, he was a fairly nice guy. I uh, talked to him after the show because he made me. <laughs> My car was right next to his. And we made eye contact, and that's bad sometimes. I was walking out there, he's like, I hate traffic. And I was like, okay, I don't know what you want to do about that together. <laughs> next to our cars, I don't... You recruiting me for something, bud? <laughs> no. I, uh, while we were chatting, I looked at his car, and I saw that he had a baby on board sticker, which honestly... I thought we were going to outgrow as a society. Like I had hope that that would happen. They've just been around for so long. People that have baby on board stickers on their cars used to be a baby on board. Like it's a family tradition now. They're like, I did it, Papa did it, you'll do it too. <laughs> we're a baby on board family, that's who we are. It's silly. I, uh, I don't have a baby on board sticker on my car. What I have on my car is a sticker that says billions of potential babies on board. <laughs> you guys don't like science? All right, that's fine. <laughs> don't want some biology jokes coming at you. Well, not coming at you, that's rude. That's, uh... <laughs> Are we okay with jokes here? Is that? <laughs> that was a childish joke. That's fine. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. I did talk for, for a bit. He had the baby on board sticker on his car. And actually, it turns out he is a father of three, which I thought was a little bit hypocritical. Because I'm like, hey, man, that's just future traffic. <laughs> that's three traffic, to be precise. You, sir, are a part of the problem. Like, you can't be vehemently anti-traffic and pro-life at the same time. Those are a little at odds. Ooh, we're gonna pull back on that punchline, San Diego. I don't know how y'all feel. I'm gonna do this next joke because I didn't like your reaction just now. Yeah, Roe v. Wade getting repealed made a lot of people upset, myself included, if I'm being honest. And they think it's like a, it's a very bad thing in America. And I do think it's bad, but I also do think ultimately it is going to be progress. Because now we're finally, finally gonna have women as domestic terrorists. <laughs> it's been a male-dominated field for a while. <laughs> this is a good joke, all right? <laughs> just because you're not on board doesn't mean I'm not right. <laughs> I'm just saying, stop talking about breaking the glass ceiling. Maybe blow it the fuck up instead. <laughs> okay, all right, moving on. Boop, boop. <laughs> 
I don't know, sometimes people are like, hey, Luke, you men aren't supposed to make jokes about that. I'm like, but what if you agree with me? Is it okay then? <laughs> okay. Anyways, ping pong. Oh, yeah, yeah, talk to him for... Uh, da, da, da. Is that the end of the joke? I don't... Yeah, it is. Okay, hey, do you guys like... Whoop, that could have stayed up here. I, uh... <laughs> I, uh... I am an uncle. Uh, my brother has three kids because he is a part of the problem. Um... <laughs> He's got a lot of open space. I think that is a part of the issue is that people that are really pro-life tend to have like big yards. <laughs> what I want to do is I just want to import a bunch of people that vote that way and perceive things that way and make them live in a city for a little while, see some brake lights and be like, mm, choices, that'd be tight. Uh. <laughs> All right, only liberals are dying in that joke. It's okay, you guys. <laughs> oh no, I'm an uncle. I have, uh, I have like three nieces and my brother did not have uh, gender reveal parties for any of them which I appreciate because I think gender reveal parties are very stupid they are getting out of hand two years ago at a gender reveal party a cannon misfired and killed a man yeah which is kind of badass because like before the baby is born there must be a blood sacrifice. <laughs> Invite Kevin. He is the least loved. <laughs> did you guys? Did you guys know that any party can be a gender reveal party? If I pull my penis out, <laughs> <laughs> like haha, it's a boy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, man, it's a man. It's a man. I'm a. I'm a man! I just think... I just don't think gender reveal parties should be wasted on unborn babies. They don't deserve it. If anyone deserves a gender reveal party, it's a trans person. They're like, yo, took a little while. <laughs> Figure it out. Pop that balloon. That shit's blue. You're like, all right, dude. What's up, bro? Welcome to the party. Because <laughs> it might. It might take a while for someone to finally figure out who they are and be comfortable with that. I mean, Elliot Page went by Ellen Page for decades. Only changed a couple years ago. I remember when, the day that news came out, I read what happened and I was just like, oh, I used to jerk off to that dude. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I guess I am an ally. <laughs> wasted a lot of potential <laughs> so I got yeah so I have three nieces for now I don't know they're young they might mix it up it might happen it's fine I love them I'll be there for them so just you know one day one of them might be like hey Uncle Luke I'm actually a boy and I'm like well I have been calling you dude this entire time so that's a real lateral move it's pretty easy nothing's gonna change except except I actually I don't want you to sit on my lap anymore cause that'd be fucking gay dude <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wasn't the entire room that laughed, so it makes me go, was that problematic? <laughs> I thought I built up enough. <laughs> it's so exhausting to think. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm an uncle. I like it now. I like being an uncle now. I, I didn't at first. Just newborns. Oh, it's boring. Easily broken. Not a fun hang for me. And I don't want to upset or offend any of you if you happen to be a baby, okay? So I'm just... <laughs> if you hear that and you're like, nah, I can't even hold up my own head. It's... <laughs> oh, someone tucked them into bed early. Mm -mm. No, it's honestly, I don't, like, I don't like hate babies or anything like that. I just, I'm not a fan, but it's just hard to be around new parents. Because they, they, oh, they, 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 they're maniacs. They turn into such weird people. You watch your friends and your family members just be like, what? I'm a different person now. You're like, all right, bud. They act like people who are on hallucinogens for the very first time. <laughs> just walking around in a daze, just like, ah. And you're like, all right, hey, man, I get it. You're more full of love and empathy than you have ever been before. That's cool. I'm stoked for you, but could you stop asking me to sniff your baby's skull? <laughs> I don't have the same chemicals in my body as you do right now. 
Also, didn't that come out of your wife just last week? Have you cleaned it properly? Because it does not look like you did. It doesn't look done. I don't know. I don't think you can put it back up there, but maybe like just five seconds in the microwave. Will that finish this off? And sometimes people just hand you a child you did not request. Yo, that is a form of gambling. He's like, this is the best thing I've ever done. I love it more than life itself. Okay, I love it when new parents say that. You're like, this is the best thing I've ever done. I'm like, dog, I know you. What else have you done? Like, <laughs> I'm not saying this isn't number one, but give me top five. Let's contextualize this. Because I know you haven't even done acid. Not even once. And that is the only, only way you can go to outer space without being a billionaire. Good, we have a couple peasants in the room tonight. Fantastic. <laughs> I hate it when people don't laugh at that. I'm like, oh, you're gonna go kick it in the sky with Jeff Bezos? No, nah, dog. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, you're dirt people like me. <laughs> Born of the earth will die here. <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was at a family get together. My brother, yeah, it's just like, this is the best thing I've ever known. I love it more than life. Catch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> took an edible before it came here that's which sometimes I do because I'm a big boy and I can have sneaky snacks if I want them but if you're gonna be like hey man I'm gonna throw an eighth month old at you I'd be like all right maybe no drugs today <laughs> be on my guard I don't want to ruin Mother's Day Michael like because <laughs> it's it makes me uncomfortable because you can't Shake a baby. <laughs> you guys didn't know that? That's like the, that's like the first rule of Baby Fight Club. <laughs> you can't shake a baby. And that's, that's boring to me, but, uh, but a toddler? <laughs> you sh shake a toddler. That is how you say hello. <laughs> I don't know what age it is, actually, like what month, trimester it is where it goes from Felony, new best friend. Like, <laughs> there's a moment. That is actually how I figured out that I enjoy being an uncle. I just showed up at a family get together, walked up. She's finally a little bit older. I'm like, "What's up, dude? How you doing?" Kind of bored. She's like, "Yes." Everyone's just talking. This is so boring. And I'm like, "I get it. I get it. I'm pretty bored too." Let's see about this. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 She's going to come over here and make me sit still and talk to me about how tall I am. Yeah, Deborah, I know I'm getting taller. It's like the one thing I know. I walk into the room, the kids are like, oh, Luke's here? Yeah, we're going to fly like dragons. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude, you are. You pick them up, you throw them to the sky. <laughs> Quick thought, uh, they are not actual dragons. Dragons understand gravity and know how to land. You, you legitimately should check your upper body strength beforehand. Because, uh, yeah, 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 they will rat you out fast. And sometimes snitches do need stitches, so. Be cautious. No children related to you were hurt during the making of that joke. Calm down. Earlier, I made a, I joked a little bit about missing March 2020. I missed the freeway. That's the only part. Every other aspect of my life, I was like, hard pass. Uh, I lost both my day job and my night job the exact same week. That was fun. Not being able to tell jokes anymore. Oh, bummed me out. It was fun finding out that you're not essential in multiple ways. That was pretty cool. 
This is the part of the show that gets sad in the middle. Don't worry, we'll move past it soon. Uh, I had to move. My, I, my lease was up at the end of March, so I had to move. So I ended up moving back to my hometown with family. Not my first choice, my only choice. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird moving back to your uh, hometown in your 30s <laughs> with family. And it was, it was an odd situation to walk in. It was my sister and then her boyfriend. And I was like, didn't really know the guy that well. He's nice, but it was just a weird situation to walk into because I'd be like, hey, man, you seem really cool, but also, like, make sure you treat her right. All right? <laughs> Anyways, here's rent. <laughs> it's kind of a weird situation. You can't, like, really buck up and be like, what's up, dude? I have very little equity. <laughs> Hope you have a good night having sex with my sister. <laughs> Oh, good. Some of you want your siblings to get laid. That's good. You're good friends. I mean, you don't have to root it on, but it's weird if people are like, never. And you're like, oh, okay, that's rude. <laughs> oh, man. It wasn't that bad, actually. It's just weird to get used to that first little chunk of time. I miss making people laugh. I couldn't see my nieces. That legit bummed me out. I miss making them laugh, shake them on about. Uh, <laughs> but luckily, uh, my sister's boyfriend has a six-year-old daughter that was there, named Joey. We got along great, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I did spend a lot of time hanging out with a six-year-old not related to me, which does sound weird on paper. <laughs> it does sound strange on paper. We got along great. Joey's a cool kid, very, very smart. She loves to play pretend, and I don't enjoy doing that. Sober. <laughs> it's very hard to yes and a child's imagination with completely clear eyes. She'd be like, you're a wizard, Luke. And I'm like, mm, that is a stick. <laughs> this is stupid. Your bedroom is bigger than mine. <laughs> What's up with that, dude? I'm like, three times your size. This is, mm, mm. oh, I'm not crushing it right now. <laughs> but if I get like 20 milligrams of THC in me, I'm like, <laughs> Voldemort is trying to do what to you, dude? <laughs> mm -mm, give me my wand. Let's go get this sneaky Slytherin son of a Sally. Let's get him! We had a lot of fun. <laughs> One day, uh, Joey and I were hanging out at the park near my place, and I was uh, swinging her around by the ankles. <laughs> you all know that move, or are we a bunch of Debras in the house tonight? <laughs> now, okay, a couple pointers if you don't know how to do it. Uh, you want to keep your shoulders back. You want to engage your core. Most importantly, you want to make sure their mom's not around. <laughs> it's very important. They're like, ah, you're like, you're going to ruin it. <laughs> uh, so we're hanging out of the park. I'm swinging Joey around. She's laughing. There's this neighborhood kid there that I don't know. Also hanging out, just laughing. I'm laughing. And I was like, that's everybody. That's 100% of the audience, dude. You're crushing it. it was, I felt so... I missed making people laugh and just hearing two kids like, ah! And I'm like, ah! It was a great day. I was, I was very, very happy. And while we're swinging, laughing together, this kid just goes, Wow, Joey, your dad's really, really funny. I was like, aw. This kid thinks I'm her father? Like, I'm not even this kid's uncle. <laughs> Like, I second string uncled so well that this kid thinks I'm a papa. I felt good. Warmed my heart. I felt great. And while I'm swinging her, just soaking it in, Joey, like the smart kid she is, just goes, Yeah, that's not my dad. That's my roommate. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> like, that's not wrong, but you the fuck? <laughs> Oh, that did kind of hurt my heart a little bit to hear that. I was like, well, there goes, there goes good feelings. All right. Uh, but I was like, all right, man, you might be a little bit uh, upset, but you are the adult in the situation, and this is a teachable moment. So I was like, yes, you are correct, Joey, but did you also know that snitches get stitches, little bitch? <laughs> and I tossed her! I was like, fly like a dragon, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, apparently that day I was Voldemort. <laughs> She constantly reminds me I have his haircut, so. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on. That was fun. I didn't grab my water. Anyway, still could be up here. Anyway. <laughs> I, uh, 
been working on getting in shape for about a decade. Uh, I've been sticking to this diet the whole time. It's called the uh, yo-yo diet. Have you guys checked it out? <laughs> it's pretty tight. It's my favorite way to lose and gain weight. <laughs> if you don't know what the yo-yo diet is, it's where uh, you work out, diet, exercise really good for about three to six months, and then a person gives you a compliment, and you go, I'm going to eat an entire pizza and blackout while thinking about what you just said to me. <laughs> We're done! We did it! There is no tomorrow. Every day is Y2K! <laughs> but I have been making some progress. Been losing some weight, getting back in shape. That's good. I attribute it to having a workout partner. Uh, he's another comic. This guy named Greg. Uh, he's a bald black dude with a beard, tattoos. That's not where you're supposed to laugh. Uh, <laughs> It's an odd, that's the setup of the... <laughs> You're like, it's mere existence. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Greg you did that. I mean, it is kind of funny. I look like the photo-negative version of him. <laughs> and he looks like a photo-negative version of me. And I'm like, we kind of match a little bit. And if you didn't laugh at that joke and you're a white person, guess what? Greg, help me write that joke. You're being racist, so... <laughs> Be better. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's it's been good to have a workout partner. Good to have some motivation. Get to the gym because I don't I don't like gyms. There's just too too many mirrors. I don't I don't need to see that much me. I'm going to the gym specifically for there to be less me. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I mean, you work out the motivation, you take the pre-workout, you listen to whatever dumb podcast you need to listen to to be like, get off your ass and do the thing. You feel good about yourself. I'm motivated. I'm walking in. I did push-ups earlier this week. My chest's coming back. I'm getting pectorals. I look like a capital P. And then you sit down on a machine, look to the side and go, that's the wrong letter. It's not a capital P. It's a capital B. For a bulbous boy with boobs. This is not, this is not ideal. It does happen. I mean, all right, most of the dudes in this room laughed. I, I don't like it when men don't laugh at that joke because I'm like, hey, dog, I'm not the only one. <laughs> Some of you were in second layers too, okay? Like, let's not... I'm not the only dude in here who's driven over a speed bump a little bit too fast. <laughs> and had it ruin my day! <laughs> that happens sometimes. You're just happy in a parking lot going a little bit over the speed limit. Maybe, who knows? Maybe I have a carpool person. We're doing it. And I hit a speed bump, it's like, dun dun, and you're like, dun dun, and you're like, what? Mm. Well, that's not what I wanted to have happen to my body. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Always been a tit man, but now I am a tit tit man, and that is not, that is not my fave. It's too hairy <laughs> for my taste. Oh, talking about tits. Okay, moving on. I, <laughs> but going to the gym, uh, and I've known Greg for about five years. He's a cool dude. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I do appreciate uh, having bald friends that aren't white guys because that happens way more often than I would like. Sometimes I just look around and I'm like, there's like four of us. We should probably, we should, we should scatter. We can't. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard of history, but uh, <laughs> shit gets dark if it gets that pale. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's not good. I, but really, I think what I'm just trying to say is that like racist dudes do really like to talk to me. <laughs> They see my hairline, they're like, I'm going to go call that guy brother. You're like, mm -hmm. no, thank you. I'd rather you did not. Guess what I'm trying to say is I do have a friendly face for hateful folk. And, it's, <laughs> and also, just so you know, this right here, not any bald man's first choice. This isn't, when do you start losing your hair, dude? 20. 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early, that's early. 17 for me. Not to brag, but... <laughs> Uh, beat ya! I, thank you. I've been waiting all these years just for that. A little bit of validation. One baldy, one chrome dome to another. Uh, yeah, I actually, I, uh, I was raised religious. I'm not anymore. Fool me once. <laughs> and I stopped believing in God as a teenager and then immediately afterwards started losing my hair. And I was like, that's an, that's an interesting coincidence. I'm like, ha ha, you're not real. He's like, ha ha, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. 
I thought it was kind of rude because I was like, hey, man, I hadn't even lost my virginity yet. So really, God, who stopped believing in whom? <laughs> it's a two-way street buckaroo. <laughs> I was like, Did you just whimper at me? <laughs> ah, that sounds like some full head of hair shit to do. <laughs> Check your privilege, bro. <laughs> that's good. That's a good line. Keep it. Keep it. Maybe do more with it than that. That's a boring haircut. <laughs> Sorry, I judge everyone's haircut because I'm like, oh, just all the options and that's what we're doing? <laughs> that's what you're doing with all... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I have a good skull. I don't, I don't hate my skull. Like, and a lot of times people, when I make jokes about being bald, they're like, but bald is beautiful. I'm like, okay, thank you. But you know what else is beautiful? Fucking options. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Options are tight, because it's either I look like a skinhead or I grow a cul-de-sac. Those are my options. <laughs> and I did grow up in the suburbs. Doesn't mean I want to carry them with me wherever I go. <laughs> oh, I was talking about the gym. Okay, back to it. I, uh, I've known Greg about five years. Uh, pretty good buds. Uh, I still don't know when he's joking, uh, because he has a very monotone voice. He just says things to me, I will start laughing. He's like, that actually happened. I'm like, oh. <laughs> How many times did your ex-wife try to murder you? <laughs> Over half a dozen times. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Oh, it's good that you got away from her. You don't want to be stuck married to someone who can't even finish a simple task. <laughs> Over half a dozen murder attempts. Oh, do you even want him dead? <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Because also, Greg, he's a type 1 diabetic. It should not be hard to kill him. <laughs> All you need to do is hide his insulin and throw Twinkies at his stupid fucking bald head <laughs> for like a day and he will die! <laughs> okay, I actually don't know how diabetes works, by the way. I, Greg has repeatedly tried to explain it to me and my ADD kicks in, my eyes glaze over. And all I hear is, God does not love me as much as the other ones. <laughs> oh, man. We were doing this exercise. Uh, it's called the overhead press. It's where you're standing there. You have a bar. And you hoist it above your head. I don't know if you guys know this about bars and heads, but if they collide, ah, that is not ideal. So it's good to have a spotter, someone catching the bar. Because if you bonk your head, you are going to become less aerodynamic. <laughs> might have to start wearing more hats. So I got Greg behind me, my friend, my workout partner, my motivator catching me. And it's the end. It's the end of our workout. We've been there about an hour. I'm tapped out. I'm running on fumes. This is my last set. I need to do three. Three reps. That's it. I'm like, all right, let's do this. Let's go. All right. Okay. That's one. No, I'm not that bad at all. Okay. Number two. Let's... Oh, okay. <laughs> Not believing. <laughs> number one was. <laughs> okay, all right. Number two, final one. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> and the, the mirror is right in front of my face. Why does that? Why does that need to be there? At no point in time during my life have I been like, I want to make direct eye contact when I'm having a terrible time. <laughs> that would be fantastic for me. Like, <clears throat> and some people, when they work out, when they sweat, they like glisten and look sexier. And that is not what I do. <laughs> I just get pink and wet. <laughs> Luke Severide, more like soggy Severide. That's, so I'm just glistening, looking at myself, just like, oh, it's not a good time for your life, is it? And earlier that week, I'd shaved my beard off because I felt good about myself, and that was incorrect. <laughs> I hadn't shaved my beard in like three years, and that, ooh, that is a bold move as a man. Getting rid of your beard, you're like, what have I been cultivating behind the curtain? <laughs> it is always more chins than I recall. <laughs> A man getting rid of his beard is a lot like a woman getting bangs. Because every time, every time we walk past the mirror, we're like, no, it, no, it looks good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like what I've done with my body. And if, if I want to change it, which I don't, but if I did, which I don't, but if I did, which I don't, but if I did, fuck! This is just how we're going to look for a little while. 
So I'm just staring in the mirror, just being like, yeah, bangs were a bad choice, weren't they? <laughs> oh, without a beard, you just look like a dumb, wet thumb. <laughs> oh, you're just a dumb, damp dude, a dumb, moist, moist man, a dumb, wet thumb. Oh, oh. Sorry, I did say the moist word. That is uh, an upsetting word for women to hear. Uh, women hate to hear that word, love to be that word, and that is irony. I love that. <laughs> Like, well, you hate it, but okay. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> but I'm just standing in the mirror, just be like, you look like a dumb wet thumb, a dumb, mm, you're a dumb wet thumb, dumb wet thumb, dumb wet thumb, dumb wet thumb. And the bar gets above my head. That's where it's the most dangerous. That's when I need the most support, most help from my friends. So, Greg, behind me, sees that I need help, sees that I need encouragement. So he leans in and whispers, white power. I'm like, <laughs> is this a test? <laughs> Cause like, how, how, how? How am I supposed to react to that? As an ally. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. All I knew for sure is that I wasn't supposed to go, yeah! Yeah! That's the last little bit I needed to put that final pep in my step, brother! <laughs> no! That is not ideal. Not at all. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I almost dropped the bar. Greg caught it, and I was like, what the fuck, dude? You almost killed me. He's like, it was pretty funny, though. I was like, yes! This is the funniest thing that's happened all month. I'm going to make a joke about it and make a bunch of white people's buttholes pucker. I can hear, I can feel the shift in the room where they're like, whoa, we can Because guess what? That end of that joke, Greg, helped me write that joke if you're a white person and you didn't laugh. Oh, you're being racist again. Cut it out. <laughs> I do think that is such a funny game for anyone who's not white to play on their white friends. <laughs> just wait till a time they're super concentrated on something, picking up something heavy, just lean in and go, hey, bud, white power. And just, <laughs> and just watch them, just watch the calculus go through and just, ha! Like, you will break their brains. And it's delightful. <laughs> Please record it and send it to me. I would love that. Oh, you guys are fun. Cool. All right. Right on schedule. Fuck you, ADD. <laughs> All right. I got, got to get out of here in a handful of minutes. You guys have been a lot of fun. Give it up for yourselves, please. Uh, fantastic audience. And the staff, be sure to tip them well. They've been taking care of you. Good job with the liquid death. I've been doing that, too. It's tasty. That's what you do if you're just like taking a break from alcohol, but you don't want to seem weak. <laughs> like, what are you drinking? You're like, fucking liquid death, dog. That's what I'm drinking. <laughs> you want a headbutt about it? <laughs> Was that too loud for some of you? <laughs> Can't use that energy on the white power joke. That's, mm, no. <laughs> like, this is going to be a rally. I would rather not. <laughs> oh. I, uh, I've made some jokes about drugs tonight a um, couple of them uh, yeah I do I do, do want to go on record and uh, say that I, uh, I actually still agree with dare I do yeah I don't think kids yeah, yeah we can clap about that um, one of you the rest of you guys are like buzzkill <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> No, I, uh, I, I still agree with Dare. I don't think kids should do drugs um, because they don't deserve them. <laughs> like at all. It's like, dude, what do you need to numb up about, bud? Like, <laughs> you got a full head of hair. Your back doesn't even hurt at all. <laughs> you just wake up and you're just like, what? Life! Yay! <laughs> you're like, I actually, okay, I went to the grocery store uh, earlier today and when I was there, I saw a kid just running around an aisle holding like a bag of chips, like a blue bag of chips, and he's like screaming at his mom. And have you ever just seen undiagnosed ADD out in the wild? And he's like, what's up, little dude? <laughs> game recognized, game, have fun. <laughs> Exhaust your mother, you're gonna. <laughs> he runs up and he has this blue bag of, uh, of chips and he throws it in the cart and he's just like, mom, dad said we can have some chips. He starts running around, circles around the cart, screaming, It's all great! It's all great! It's all great! 
And I get it. I love me some Sun Chips, but I'm like, dog, that's a blue bag. That's original Sun Chips. That's boring, basic Sun Chips. That's not like Harvest Cheddar, French Onion, or my personal favorite, Garden Salsa. And he's this happy? Like, dude, do you guys know how good I have to be at doing drugs to be that happy again? You don't need them! You're fine, chase that dragon later. <laughs> and that's why I uh, got a bunch of shirts made that look like the D.A.R.E. logo that say, uh, kids don't deserve drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I smoked a lot of weed to come up with it. <laughs> mm, okay, so if you guys want these, I, have, I only have a handful of double XLs and then XLs, that's all I have. But I also have stickers uh, if you want to, uh, buy some of those. Those are just pay what you want. So, I mean, if you guys think I'm funny, fucking give me money. Uh, I don't want to have a roommate again. Uh, <laughs> but I'll be hanging out in the back of the room. Uh, and if you did enjoy my comedy, good job. That is the appropriate reaction to have. Uh, not enough of a response on that line. Okay. I thought you made him happy. I did too, bud. I guess not. Oh, shit. <laughs> Um, but come over. I have a QR code you can scan. It just takes you to all my social media. If you guys want to follow me, that'd be great. I'm going to be back here at some point. Sign up for my email list. I'll send you some free tickets if I can do that and hopefully see you all again. Um, cool. All right. There's the sales pitch. Uh, actually, no. You know what? I still got fucking time. I'm going to do the entire sales pitch. <laughs> I remember. I do. Like I said, t-shirts. I have them. Uh, and I am a metalhead. And I like to go to live shows. And I like to support bands that I like. I love finding a new band and being like, yo, that's dope. I'm gonna find you, I'm gonna follow you. Let me buy a shirt. I always buy a shirt. And as soon as I put it on, I go, huh, whose body is this for? <laughs> why, why is this, it's a box. Who, who's, who's this supposed to fit? It cha it's chafing my nips immediately. <laughs> Does not cup my tits the way I want my tits cupped at all. I don't like this, I'm mad. So these shirts, when I got them, I made sure they're gonna cup your tits just the way you want your tits cupped. <laughs> They will not chafe your nips. If anything, they're gonna caress them real nice. And I know this because I've tried them, each and every one of them on individually. It's a Luke Severide guarantee. Okay, that's the end of the sales pitch. But yes, you guys were fun. Please come say hi. Um, most comics uh, wanna end shows on like a high note where you're like, ooh, that guy was really funny, big laugh, I like him. And that's not gonna happen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that was earlier. <laughs> but I do feel like this is a good analogy for life, because sometimes when it ends, you're just like, ooh, it was way better earlier. <laughs> My name's Luke Severide. You guys are a lot of fun. 